Now, admittedly, admittedly, I have not watched a ton of Raw over the past several months, which I find very good for my wrestling fandom health. Who the hell wants to sit there and watch three hours of show every week, especially largely three hours of crappy wrestling television programming? And I'll still like check out Twitter during Raw and I'll watch some of the highlights, but especially with Monday Night Football, like there's just no real incentive or reason to sit through three hours of Raw or even two hours of Raw or frankly even an hour of Raw and sometimes even one segment of Raw. And I will tell you, as I was making my decision like for the rest of 2020, what shows I was going to watch, what shows I was going to review, and etc., like one of the big determining factors in my decision-making process is once I found out that this stupid retribution faction, this stupid retribution story was going to take place on Raw, I said, you know what? Give me SmackDown. I'm good. Because you're going to have a couple of old men, most notably Vince, trying to book some type of Antifa-like and Antifa-inspired angle, not caring to understand or understanding that perspective whatsoever, certainly going to put their own political spin on it, and it's just going to be largely a farce, a fart, and a joke. And I think for the most part it has been. It seems like a lot of people agree, although recent events have kind of changed that narrative, it feels like, a little bit. So now you get to Monday and you get to Raw. And you get the big reveal of who's the mastermind behind this retribution faction. And, and there's a part of me that, that feels bad for going down this path because I traditionally am somebody that harps on storyline continuity. I am traditionally somebody that is very adamantly in favor of things that make sense, as much as you can make sense out of professional wrestling sometimes. But more so, like, having a logical reason for things to happen, as crazy as it might be. Or going with the right type of person in the right type of situation. Like a perfect example to me, if you remember years and years back, I think it was PS Power, did a video talking about uh, TNA and kind of like their legend buddy system. And he was talking about how screwed up it was, who they had people paired with. Like the natural pairing for Hogan would have been Matt Morgan. The natural pairing for... You know, somebody like a Ric Flair might have been a Desmond Wolf at the time. Um, but they were pairing Hogan with Abyss. Like, just so many things were off about it. Like, that just didn't make sense. Whereas if you paired Abyss with Mankind, it makes obviously all the freaking sense in the world. So I, I, I like those things that make sense. Those things that you can latch onto and you say, you know what, I get it and I can understand it. Even if that wasn't their original intention... It works for me. So you, you got to be imagining my surprise when I find out the big reveal. It's Ali. Mustafa Ali. Does he have both names now? Or is he just Ali? I guess he's both names now again. Is he? He is the leader of Retribution. Really? Mustafa Ali is the leader of Retribution? And this is supposed to be some game-changing seismic thing? This is supposed to be something that draws me into watching Raw? <laughs> now, like I said, I do feel kind of bad about having to come on here and crap all over this because I like Mustafa Ali. You know, I could get a sense that he's a good talent in terms of as a ring performer. Works hard, seems to be a decent guy, good family man, so a lot of things to like about him. Um, but when I look at a group like this, and I look especially, and I say, you know, you're going with some S.H.I.E.L.D. type of stuff, or you're going with some Nexus type of stuff, you know, or you're going with some type of overpowering dominant faction, whether you go heel or face with this group, which I'm not even 100% sure is certain, especially since you've been sending them after the Hurt business, what the hell are you doing with that? 
Like, it just doesn't feel like Mustafa Ali fits. Which is crazy because, storyline-wise, it makes a world of sense. We all know he was the SmackDown hacker going back months ago. We also know that this was a guy that was pushed to the side due to injury that allowed Kofi Kingston to get that spot at Elimination Chamber that eventually led to him getting the WrestleMania World title match against Daniel Bryan. So this is a guy in Mustafa Ali that sits there and can say, you know, I've been jobbing and working on C and D level shows. Like, again, a lot of this from a storyline aspect makes sense, especially when you talk about the personal elements of Ali being a former police officer and talking about corruption in the system. It ties into WWE and the corruption of the system. Like, there are a lot of things you could do here. You could tie the hacking thing into the retribution thing and tie it all back to Mustafa Ali and make him seem like this really genius, genius type of criminal, villainous mastermind. And none of this works for me. It just doesn't. Like, I look at this and I say, you expect me to take this group seriously when you've now aligned them with a largely nobody. And I don't mean that in an offensive way. It's just reality in the grand scheme of things of WWE in the past five years. Mustafa Ali's had been a blip on the radar. He's had some moments, you know, 205 Live, stuff like that. But largely inconsequential and totally and completely irrelevant. He has been. Even if you like him, like you can like wrestlers and acknowledge that in the scheme of WWE, they are irrelevant. And he has been largely irrelevant. Now you're taking this largely irrelevant guy, putting him in charge of this anonymous faction, if you will, and now that's supposed to make them relevant and as a byproduct make him relevant, and I just don't see it. I don't. Like, again, you look at the people on the roster, maybe he makes as much sense as anybody. I might not dispute that. I might not disagree with that. But maybe this is just more of an indication of how much this thing really jumped the shark from the beginning and how dumb it still remains to be. You know, and some of you are going to say, well, obviously something worked because it got a high level of views in a short period of time on the YouTube channel. And what does that really mean? That's one very small piece of an overall much larger picture. Like you put a guy in this type of spot, the way that you have featured this group over the past several weeks now, you need to have somebody that is potentially ready for prime time. And do you really think that Mustafa Ali, as a character, as a persona, as a gimmick, whether heel or face does not matter, is truly ready for the main event spotlight? And not because of the match stuff, not because of the moves you marks. I'm talking about in the things that really matter in the ways that actually draw money. I guess you'll find out. I guess you'll see. But even beyond that, like just looking at this faction, you got guys with names like what? T-Bar, Miss, Slapjack. What, what, what's, what's freaking Ali's name going to be? Asshat! These names are stupid. I'm sorry. They're stupid. Looks like their Twitter game might be pretty good, but their names, the gimmick, is freaking stupid. And if you want to come back to everything here, the like true root of it, like beyond just the thought of Ali hasn't been anything, and all of a sudden he's this big mastermind, and he's the leader of this group. <laughs> and I can laugh about that all I want. But the reality is we have to get more basic and truly more fundamental here. WWE deserves absolutely, absolutely, positively, fundamentally zero of your benefit of the doubt, especially when it comes to Monday Night Raw. In recent years, what have they done to earn it? What have they done to merit it? What have they done to deserve it? The answer is nothing. And if you say it is anything other than nothing, I would say, ding dong, dumb dick, that's wrong. So now I'm supposed to have confidence that they're going to piece all of this together and tell this interesting and compelling story with this faction that they've largely screwed the pooch with from day one any damn way. But all of a sudden now, putting Ali smack down front and center of that bitch is going to fix everything. I don't think so. 
And if you want an indication of just how little you should trust WWE and Vince McMahon and kind of that whole Raw brand as a whole for making this work, this is supposed to be a big reveal. You're building up to this for a while. This faction has gotten run for a while on your television. And it doesn't even close the show! It goes on before the six-man tag, so that way you can give Randy Orton the shine! Are you serious? Really? Really? So you're supposed to be all hyped, and I'm supposed to be all hyped about Ali leading this stupid ass what the hell you're supposed to make out of a faction with some of the dumbest names I've ever heard of. And all the while, I'm supposed to have faith and confidence that this is going to be a big spotlight moment for him and it's going to elevate this group and take him to another level. And I'm supposed to have all the confidence in the world in WWE and their writing. And when we're talking about A, WWE and their writing, and B, they didn't even bother to do the damn reveal to close out the show. Like you waited so damn long, you might as well wait to the main event segment. Is that so hard to fathom? Is that so hard to understand? Apparently it is in Vince world. Look, y'all can be excited for Ali and his opportunity. I'm excited for Ali and his opportunity too. However, I just feel like I'm being realistic. It is much more likely that in six to nine months, you've quickly moved on with your life than this being the type of big break that Ali leads this faction and you're talking about them being one of the truly great ones in WWE history and it's helping cement his place as a main eventer in the lexicon of the current roster. I mean, to me, the cynical approach is the much more logical one here. You got a lot to prove to me with this crap because so far it's mostly been trash. Absolute trash. And just because you add a new name, a new shiny toy, if you will, into the mix, that doesn't change anything. <laughs> I'll read. Now I'm supposed to take it seriously. Oh, good lord. I guess in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. Because people move up and down the cards all the time. They have no megastars. So what the hell difference does it make, right? 